Lord Jesus, we just come before you today, Father God, and we ask you, Lord, to be with us today, Lord, to open our eyes and our ears, Lord, that we may hear your word, Lord. And Lord, we just love you and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today we are going to talk about stewardship of the temple. And the part that I'm doing is going to be stewardship of the, of the temple in our body, amen. And as I was studying this out, I like to look up, and I, you have to excuse me because I have a hard time saying this word. I like to look up statistics on stuff. That's, that's just me. <laughs> so let's look at some of them. Cigarette deaths per year is 480,000. High blood pressure and heart disease one person dies every 36 seconds in the U.S. from cardiovascular disease. About 655,000 Americans from heart disease each year, and that's one in every four deaths. And that was a study done in September 2020, and I'm sure with everything that's going on, it's probably higher. Alcohol-related deaths is 95,000 people approximately 68,000 men and 27,000 women die from alcohol-related causes annually, making alcohol the third lead, making alcohol the third preventable cause of death in the U.S. And that was as of June the 1st, 2021. With all the stress that's, with all the stress that's going on now, the numbers are probably higher. Now, more than ever, we need to be good stewards over the temple, which is over our body. All addictions are rooted in the lack of self-esteem and insecurity and the need to be loved. Amen? And church, there is coming a time in the very, very near future that you are not going to be able to go to your doctor to get your medicine or if you was to ever get hurt to go get fixed. And I believe that that's probably not right on our very back door that is coming in the very near future. So let's look at Romans 12.1. Romans 12.1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 says, Or do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we can learn from these scriptures that our body is not our own. Amen? It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is God's dwelling place. Remember that what we learned when we first started the stewardship class, remember what the stewardship means? The job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property or management. So remember, our body right now is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? We are the temple. But we need to remember that our body is out on loan right now. We are management over our bodies right now. We're managing our bodies. So it's important that we keep our bodies healthy. It's important that we keep our bodies healthy. It's kind of like when you're sweeping your house and you're cleaning your house and you get out all the dirt and all the mess and, and you really work a good, you know, you really work hard to get that house clean, it makes you feel good. 
it makes you feel good like oh I've got my house clean I swept my floors I've done my mopping I've dusted it make it makes you feel good well it's the same way with the temple it's the same way with our bodies it's the same way remember God likes a clean temple God will not bless a mess I heard that I think Pastor Linden said that one time God likes a clean temple. God will not bless a mess. You'll feel better when your house is clean. You'll feel better. So remember, if we're not healthy ourselves, we cannot help no one else. So if we're not healthy ourselves, we can't help no one else. And here's a little secret. It's not a secret, really. God cares about the physical needs of his people. It's not a big secret. He cares about the physical needs of his people. There are lots of scriptures in the Bible about healing and about the physical, physical help. And some of the physical healings that God done was the woman with the issue of blood, the lame man, the blind man. The Bible has a lot to say about our health and our healing. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Whether therefore you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. It takes discipline to be healthy. In our family affairs class, and I thoroughly enjoyed that family affairs class, we learn we have the responsibility to keep our bodies healthy, to keep our bodies healthy for our relationship between a husband and wife. Amen? Me as a pastor, I need to be healthy to minister to the flock and to be ready to call upon. Having the temple physically healthy, which also means spiritual health, right? If your temple is healthy, then your spirit is healthy. Remember, everything that manifests in the physical will manifest in the spirit realm first. Always, always. Everything that manifests in the physical will manifest in the spirit realm first. You, as a congregation... We all need to get healthy so you can witness to other people and lead other people to Christ. That is so important. We must guard our temple. We must guard our temple. You heard of the song, and some of you may not have heard it, but if you've ever been to Bible school, you've heard of the song, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. There's a Father up above who is looking down with love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And your ears, what you hear. In other words, we need to be careful what we put in front of you. Be careful what you put in front of you. That includes food. That can, includes books, TV, movies be careful what you put in front of you we like and I'm speaking to me too we like that instant gratification instant gratification it may entertain you for a little bit but it won't lift you up spiritually right and I bought I brought a few examples on instant gratification I have here a tangerine or I think it's a cutie it's a cutie it's healthy right right and we all probably at some point says ew I don't like that I don't want that and here I have a Swiss cake roll right well we would probably rather have the Swiss cake roll because it's what Instant gratification. 
you may get that sugar rush for a while, and it may make you feel good for a while, but is it going to be healthy for you in the long run? This would be help more healthier, but we want that instant gratification. And that's just like with movies and TV and books. We, you know, we might want to pick up a good book and read it. Nothing wrong with that. So don't say Pastor Renee said you can't read a book. I'm not saying that. We might want to pick up a good book and read it every once in a while, and it might be a good book. But we need to drag out the Word of God and get it in our spirit, just like with TV and movies. We don't want to be that microwave generation. The microwave generation is beep. Ding, 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 it's done. It's done instantly. Instantly, that's what we call the microwave generation. We want it done, and we want it done now. We want it now. So part of stewardship of the temple is putting the death, the deeds of the flesh. Putting the death, the deeds of the flesh. Romans 8, 12 says, Therefore, brethren... We are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Verse 13, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Let me tell you something. When you start getting that flesh under, uh, under submission, that flesh is going to scream at you. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I want it now. I want it now. Do it now. Do it now. Give it to me. I want it now. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, the, the, the 1960s version, where the girl was spoiled rotten and she says, and I want it now. I want it now. Well, that's why your flesh uh, does. When you start getting the flesh under submission and you start working on getting your flesh under control, it's going to scream at you. It's going to scream at you. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to do that. But remember the verse that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not easy, but we can do that. We can do that. We, as a church, and as a people, we have to quit walking in the flesh. We have to quit walking in the flesh. If you exercise the physical body, you know, if you exercise the physical body, that's great. That's wonderful. But you also need to exercise the spiritual body as well. And that means, when I say exercising the spiritual body as well, that means... If you have to get up 30 minutes earlier or if you have to cut the TV off before you go to bed, you need to spend that time with God. It is so important, so important. Get in there, read, study His Word. Build that temple up because we are the body of Christ. God dwells in, a te- in our temple. We have to spend time with God. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Our temple, our body, spiritual and physical, right? We need to study the word of God. We need to study the word of God. You know, our temple and our body was so important that John wrote it in one of the books of the Bible. And we can find that in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. He thought, you know, he said it was very important. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So that's, you know, that's important. He wanted us to be healthy. He wrote about it in the book of John, 3 John. In other words, he wanted us to not he wanted us to be sound in body and in our mind. Sound in body and our mind. 
So I think that, you know, that's we need to keep our temple healthy. And as I said before, there's coming a time in the very near future where you're not going to be able to get your medicine. And we need to rely on God for our health and our healing. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Tim. Amen. 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 Oh, and by the way, I'll remove this temptation from Pastor Renee after a while. I'll take care of that. <clears throat> I'll make sure that doesn't bother her anymore. <laughs> See you already. Praise God. Everybody good? All right. As we continue on with our stewardship today, stewardship of the temple of God, Again, I want to start with the scripture Pastor Renee read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. And I, I read out of the New King James Version. Verse 19 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Verse 20, For you were... Brought, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen? Now let's back up just a couple of verses to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 17. I don't know if I gave that to them or not. I may not have. But he who was joined, who is joined to the Lord is one is one spirit with him so what I'll back and read that again chapter verse 17 1 Corinthians chapter 16 or chapter 6 verse 17 but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him so that being said what or who is the temple we are we are the temple of God. We just read several scriptures backing that up. Again, the temple of God is the dwelling place. A place or an object where the Spirit of God dwells. Amen? So we are, we are, everybody say we are. We are the temple of God. Amen. Now we are the temple of God. Uh, and again, the, the meaning of the temple of God is a place or an object in which God dwells, such as the body of a Christian. As the temple of God, or dwelling place of God, His power and presence are inside of us. Now think about that for just a minute. The power of God, because we are His temple, God dwelling inside of us. The power of God is on the inside of us. Pastor Renee talked about healing. The power of God flowing through us to bring healing to people. It's not anything we do other than be obedient vessels. It's the power of God. The presence of God inside of us. Each one of us who have received, who have decided to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior who have placed Him number one in their lives, has that same chance, has the same thing, the same anointing. We are the temple of God. The dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now in the Old Testament, just show you a little bit about the power of God. In the Old Testament, The dwelling place of the presence of God was in the Holy of Holies. Amen? And you've heard us talk about this over the years several several different times. And you've read it. As the innermost, the presence of God was in the Holy of Holies. As the innermost sacred area of the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant was there. And it, the Holy of Holies, the presence of God 
was only accessible once a year by an Israeli, Israelite high priest. Amen. Now the presence of God was so powerful. The presence of God was so powerful that if the priest wasn't prepared, Amen, Pastor Linden's message last week, if the priest wasn't prepared, it could mean death. If you remember the, the story, he would tie, they would tie a cord around him or a rope. So when he went beyond behind the veil, if he wasn't prepared, they could pull him out because he was the only one at that time that was allowed to go beyond the veil, behind the veil. In other words, the high priest had to make sure he was prepared to enter in to the presence of the Most High God. To enter in to the presence of the Most High God. Church now, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, as we partook of Holy Communion this morning, we don't have to have that high priest as a mediator. The middle wall of separation has been torn down. We have access. We have access to the Most High God. And again, once we receive Him and ask Him to be our Lord and Savior and make Him first in our lives above anything else, we become the temple of God. The presence of God inside of us. The dwelling place of the Most High God. Now today we're talking about stewardship of the temple. That right there is all I need to say. The presence of the Most High God is inside of us. In our spirit. The Spirit of God is dwelling inside of us. Why wouldn't we be good stewards of that? But now, everyone say, but now, once again, because Jesus willingly shed His blood and gave His life on the cross for us to cleanse us from unrighteousness. To cleanse from unrighteousness those who would receive Him as their Lord and Savior can be the temple of God. The dwelling place of God's presence and power. The power of His presence. The power of of the presence of God. God just keeps speaking that as I study this over and over. He just kept, kept uh, reiterating that in my, in my mind, in my spirit. The power of His presence is dwelling inside of us. We sang a song a while ago. When we pray, when we pray and enter into the presence of the Most High God, the world will change. The world's not going to change themselves. It's up to us. It's up to the people the people who are the temple of God, the dwelling place, carrying the Most High God inside of us to pray, to go out into the highways and byways, to share this, to make that change. Amen? That's free. Hallelujah. We can become that temple of God, the dwelling place of the power, the power of the presence of God. Now turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, if you will, please. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and, and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into the temple of the Lord, in whom, you are also, in whom you also are being built together for our dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So what that's telling us is we're moving from being individual now as a corporate body. As believers of God, we are all the temple of God. Everyone in here has received Christ. We are the temple of God. 
what, there's 20 something I think in here today or close. Small in number, but the power of God's presence is in each one of us. And when we join together in unity, man, look out. Mighty things can and will happen. Amen? These verses again are telling us that together we are the temple of God. We read in Corinthians earlier about our body, the singular, being the temple. And the Bible also talks about us being the temple, plural, together. Being fitted together. Or in other words, under construction. God really spoke to me about that. We're growing. We're growing. The Bible talks about, I won't get into it, about uh, the babes drinking the milk of the Word. And then we move on to eat the meat of the Word. But we're growing. We're under construction. I can speak for me. I've not yet arrived. Amen? I think the church still has a little ways to grow, don't you? We are under construction. We're growing. Again, I don't know about you, but I find some comfort about that in the fact that in the statement that we're we're growing because like I said, I don't have it all together yet. And I don't see the church, the collective body of Christ as being all together either. We're definitely a work in progress. So let Christ shape you. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at Romans 12. Verses 4. I've got a lot of scriptures here, but we're going to go through them pretty fast. Verses 4 through 21. I promise you I won't keep here past 2 or 3. As we read these verses, keep in mind, we're talking about stewardship. We're talking about stewardship of the temple. Remember, as the temple of God, His power, His presence is inside of us. Romans 12.4 For as we have many members in one body, and all members have have not the same office, excuse me, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members we of of another. Stewardship of us being the temple of God whether individually or collectively, is to walk in unity. Look what Jesus Christ done with 12 people. 11 walking in unity with Him. Look, I was talking a while ago, we sung the song. The world is changing. They changed the world. 12 people changed this world. We've got more than that in here today. If we walk in unity, understanding what we're talking about today, taking care of the temple, the power and the presence, the Spirit of God, think what can be done. Amen. Think what can be done in Candler, North Carolina, West Asheville, and beyond, Haywood County, <clears throat> Buncombe, Marion, uh, McDowell County, whatever counties are around us, Transylvania, wherever. There's no limit. To what can be done. Thank you, Jesus. Walk in unity. There's a scripture in Deuteronomy 32. You don't have to go there. That talks about one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. The power of God in two people walking in unity is that much more than just one. The power of God in two people. Two people can put 10,000 to flight. We can put the enemy on the run. Because we read the end of the book, he's whipped anyway. He's beat. He's defeated. He doesn't understand that yet. But we, we do. Two of us walking in unity. 20 of us. What do we say? 75 or 100, I think the sanctuary will hold. 100 people walking in unity. 
we can take this power of God, can take this surrounding communities and make a difference for the kingdom of God. Church is simple. It's simple. Simple math. Simple math. I didn't take time to multiply all that out, but simple math. All we have to do is what we've been called to do. <laughs> Church, we get up in the mornings, we all go to work. We work for compensation. We go in, we do what we're supposed to. Amen? Or else we get sent home without that compensation. So why not get up and do what God has called us to do? Why not be a steward? I don't, I don't know this Holy Spirit. Why not be that stewardship? Walk in that stewardship. Take care of the, pre the presence of God inside of us. Church, look at, the, look at the stats. Pastor Renee talked about the stats. You don't have to see the news. My phone has got an app that, I, by the way, I'm going to delete. But it, it's a news break. And every few minutes through the day, it talks about another shooting in western North Carolina, another stabbing, another robbery, another whatever calamity might come. Church, this world needs Jesus. And there's not long to, to deliver Jesus to them. There's not a lot, lot of time left. Amen. Move on. Verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the uh, proportion of faith. All these verses will be self-explanatory, so again, I'm going to move on through them. Most of them. Or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering or ministry let us use it in our ministry some of some have the gift that enables them to most effectively serve the body of Christ in physical ways amen over the past several years some of the men that have been been with us for a while we've done a lot of the physical part pastor Lyndon and I and again some of the men Mickey We've moved a lot of people. We've carried gun safes. We've carried boxes, dressers, and beds. And plus, get behind the pulpit and minister. Do one-on-one -on -one ministry. Amen? But some people have that gift. They most effectively serve in that, in that particular manner. For a season anyway. And thank God I think my season is about finished with that. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministry. The ministry of helps. Go on. He who teaches in teaching, be a good steward of the teaching. Study to show yourself approved. He who exhorts in exhortation. Encourage people. Encourage people instead of seeing everybody and their brother beat down. The world has beat you down. Hold your head up. When you receive Christ, you are, you are a, a child of the Most High God. We don't have to look down. We look up. Amen? And that's for me. Thank you, Lord. Exhort people. Encourage people. He who gives with liberality. Now some are called to finance the kingdom of God. I know what all of you are thinking. Now, that doesn't mean that the rest of us should stop uh, tithing or giving. So you, you don't get out that easy. Amen? Come on now. <clears throat> Some are called to finance the kingdom of God. Some people are blessed to be able to pour the finances into the ministry to finance the kingdom of God.
Amen. <clears throat> Again, that doesn't mean that we, we can quit tithing. He who leads with diligence is he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now that's a big calling to be a leader and be cheerful about it. Because people don't like to be led most of the time. Amen? All right, the next few verses <clears throat> will tell us how we should behave as living, breathing, walking temple of the Most High God. Teach us how we should behave. And again, I'll go through these pretty fast. They're pretty much self-explanatory. But I want to read them so you can, can uh, keep them in your mind. Keep remembering them in our day-to-day lives. Amen? Verse 9. Let us love. Let love be without hypocrisy. Love everyone. Love without hypocrisy. Don't say you love someone and go over here to John over here. Hey, let me tell you about them. That's, that's, mm, amen? Love without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Shun evil. Don't, don't have no part of it. Do not give it place in our lives. Move away from it. Push it away. Pastor Renee talked about be careful what you let in front of you. Be careful what you let in through the eye gate, the ear gate. Be careful through the, through the mouth. Make sure it's still there. <clears throat> Abhor what's evil. Cling to what is good. Stay away from the evil. Hang on to what is good. Amen? Remember the phrase, God is good. And all the time. Amen. Hang on to God. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. One of the great commandments, or the second part of the great commandment. Not lagging in, in diligence. Folks, be diligent about your stewardship. Church, be diligent. I think as Peter says, be sober, be vigilant. Be sober minded, be vigilant. Church, don't go to sleep. Now's not the time to go to sleep. Keep the cobwebs swept out of the temple, keep it clean. Be the stewardship. Be the steward that you're called to be. Remember, it doesn't belong to us anyway. Our body is not ours. It belongs to the Most High God. We honor Him. Amen? <clears throat> Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Passionate about serving God. <laughs> Church, we need to be passionate about serving God. Verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Don't give up. If I take one thing from my dad, it would be his patience. One of the most patient men I ever met in my life. So I hope that some of that rubs off, that I can receive some of that. Rejoice in hope. Patient in tribulation. We all go through the tribulation. We all have problems. There's always something <clears throat> going, you know, coming at us. The enemy's always walking to and fro on the earth seeking whom he may devour. Always on the job. He's diligent. So why can't we be? Amen? Be patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Prayer changes. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Given to hospitality. Amen. Some may need help. Some may need prayer. Some may need just, just need someone to listen to them without being judgmental or high-minded. People don't need somebody with a, with a haughty spirit. They need someone with the love of God flowing out of them and the 
power of His presence. Verse 14, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Bless and do not curse. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against people. People are not our enemies. Those people walking around like that, their body's not theirs either. Amen? (laughs) Bless those who persecute you. Verse 15, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be compassionate. Be there for people. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Be there in times of sorrow. Thank you, Lord. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Do not think more highly of yourself than you ought. Verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil. Again, that's not our job. Don't repay evil for evil. The eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, whatever else they say. That's not our job. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. People are watching us who claim to be Christians, who profess to be believers. People are watching. The unbelievers are watching. The other believers are watching. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it's possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Because some people remain so uh, passionately opposed to us as much as li- within your power live peaceably among all men because some people live so so passionately opposed to us that peace will leave that peace will, will fade out it'll disappear it won't be there and that's not us personally it's not against us personally they're not attacking us personally it's the presence of God in us Amen? Again, there are times when all efforts toward peace fail. So we have to make sure that we're doing our part. That we're being stewards of of the temple of God with the love of God, the peace of God in us. Make sure we're doing our part when that peace breaks down. Amen? Real quickly, I'll tell you a funny story. Several years ago when we first moved in this building, we were doing some neighborhood walks. We'd go through different neighborhoods in the community, hand out flyers and tracts and some uh, Lifesaver candies in a, in a little bag. <clears throat> Share with them where ministry just moved into the, into the community. Want to invite you and let you know we're here. If you need anything, we'd love to pray with you. We'd love to help you in any way we possibly can. Well, you know, God chooses me, I guess. <clears throat> we pull up on the on this street and I walk up to this house and got a fence around it and the gate's open. So, okay. I walk on in, the front door open. I walk up to the door and knock on the door. Well, here comes this ferocious, about six pound chihuahua. He comes out and he bites me on the back of the hill, you know. And uh, I wasn't the most happy fellow in in the neighborhood at the time. But I was thinking, you know, here I am with a track from the WNC Freedom Center sharing the love of God with this man or wanting to. So I can't kick his dog. I can't talk ugly to him for allowing his dog to bite me. So what are you going to do, you know? So the peace of God wasn't real prevalent at the time in him. So I didn't kick the dog, praise God. I I will admit the thought entered, but I I, I can't. (laughs) God kept me from it. Anyway, I done my part. I done my part. We'll go into the others later, but I done my part. I, did, I handed him the track and I said, We're here if you need us. I walked out and I shut the gate. Won't be back. <clears throat> <laughs> I 
Verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay it, says the Lord. Instead of taking vengeance in our, in our own hands, taking vengeance ourselves, we should let God take care of that. Remember, once again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. Steward of the temple. So don't worry about getting even when someone does this wrong. Whether it's a real wrong or whether it's a perceived wrong. Amen? Verse 20. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. The power of the presence of God. Now stop just a minute and think about that. <clears throat> if your enemy is hungry, feed him. The power of God working through us will allow that to take place. Again, it don't say if your best friend is hungry, feed him. Right? It says if your enemy is hungry, you feed him. Feed him with the right attitude. Don't buy a hamburger and throw it down and say, there, eat that. Say, here, let me feed you. Eat this and pray over it to be nourishment to his body, her body. If your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in doing so, you will willingly, you will heat coals of fire on his head. So don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Verse 21. Through the power of God's presence in us, we can overcome evil. Pastor Lyndon read Scripture last week. But we overcome by the power of God, by our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, by the presence of God. And as I close, I want to leave you with one thing. I want to leave you with this. Keep this with you as you go through every day. Never forget, as the temple of God, you have His presence with you at all times. Never forget that you have access to His presence at all times. When things are, when, when things are going a different direction than you think they should. When things are not going the way you think they should. When you think the enemy's bombarding you. We have that access. We are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. Be steward of that temple. Take care of that. There's a lot of people out there longing for that kind of comfort. They're longing for something that they don't know what it is yet. If we take care of that, if we take care of the temple, as Pastor Renee says, in the physical realm, we're able to walk. We walk several miles in that neighborhood walk. Several miles in the mountains of western North Carolina. Kind of hilly over here, not mountainous, but we walked up and down the roads several miles, door to door, facing ferocious dogs. But only because we, we were stewards, stewards, over the temp, stewards of the temple of God. Because we looked after and kept the presence of God alive in us. Thank you. Kept the presence of God alive in us at all times. Church, no matter where you go, no matter where you go, no matter where you're at, at any time, you have access to the presence of God. All you have to do is close your eyes. Say, thank you, God. God, help me. Talk to Him. Allow Him to share with you. Allow Him to shape you. Allow Him to speak to you. Allow Him to lead, guide you, direct you. 
show you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Amen? Hallelujah. You have access. If you leave here with nothing else, leave here with that. Amen? Amen. Pastor Lena. Amen. Praise God, Pastor Tim Renee. Thank you. I just want to say one thing. This past, this past week, Pastor Don and I, we had the opportunity. To, I had to go to a business meeting. She got to go with me. And when we got there, I mean, it was, it was for my work. And, and, but when we got there, it was amazing the two days that we were there, the pull on the people that were there out of Pastor Donna and I for spiritual things. And it was amazing. A lot of lost people there. Big house, wealthy, people making big money, lost, worshiping all kinds of stuff. But what they wanted or what they, what they engaged Pastor Don and I with was the whole time we were there, now, I mean, I had to go to the business meeting stuff, but everybody there was just pulling from us about spiritual things. There's a hunger and a thirst. It may not be in here. We may not be able to get people here, but we know where they are. So take this message to heart and know there are people that are hungry and thirsty for what you got. And as a part of that stewardship, the Lord calls us to let rivers of living water flow through us I'm not so concerned about church growth if our church doesn't grow and if there's not more commitment our church will not be here I think you, you spoke our, our church if, if there's not some changes among those of us that are here our church will not be here I'm no fool you're no fool but there is a place for us no matter whether we're gathering here or where we're gathering there is a place for us, and it is in that world out there that is desperate and hungry. They don't need to be beat on the head. Religion has done that enough. They need to know the truth. They need to know the truth. So let's, let's really take this message to heart that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God that moved upon the face of the waters and brought organization to this world. Because when the Holy Spirit moves, the presence of God moves, people will bow down. People will bow. People will bow to worship because they've never experienced anything like that before. It's a great and wonderful thing. So let's, let's, let's be more concerned. Let's be more concerned about the people that need to know what we've got rather than fussing at people for what they have amen lord jesus we just come before you today father god and we ask you lord to be with us today lord to open our eyes and our ears lord that we may hear your word lord and lord we just love you and praise your name in jesus name we pray